Hello and thanks for joining us today. My name is Brennan Hopkinson. I am a Product Marketing Manager at Visio Farm and I'll be your moderator for today's lecture. Today we'll have two speakers, David Mason, Visio Farm's Technical Specialist. Trained as a cell biologist and microbiologist, he has spent over a decade in academia specializing in light microscopy and digital image analysis. We also have Keith Bowers, the Senior Business Development Manager at Oracle Bio. Keith has over 25 years of experience in large pharma, biotech, and the contract services sector. Today's lecture will be an overview of a VisioFarm Oracle Bio workflow, where David will demonstrate the tools available within the VisioFarm platform and how they can be used to support a range of image analysis workflows. Keith will then discuss how Oracle Bio integrates these tools into a customer-centric, scalable workflow to generate value for drug discovery and project development. Thank you very much for your time today, guys, and I'm excited for the presentation, so I'll let you take it from here. David, you'll begin, so please start whenever you're ready. Thanks for the introduction. In the first part of today's talk, I'd like to introduce the VisioFarm platform and tools. The VisioFarm platform can really be thought of as an easy-to-use toolbox, not to solve a single problem, but to solve a range of image analysis problems to support not only the research and work of today, but those of tomorrow as well. The VisioFarm toolbox has integrated into it a core set of tools. These features are easy to use for building apps. In this case, apps are our modular unit of image analysis processing. The deep learning classifiers are built right into these tools and are easy to use. It's very important to us that the, the outputs also be customizable. Again, every single question you ask of your data will require different metrics. And another pillar that the VisioFarm software is built on is that there be no coding required. And this makes it really easy for users to come in and start building apps to solve problems with very little lead time. You can see from these example images that we also accept a wide range of modalities using the core tools. In this case, H&E, IHC Brightfield, as well as fluorescence and some more exotic file types as well. Now, the core platform features sometimes need to be extended. And this is where we introduce modules. Modules are additional processing units that can be added onto the core VisioFarm tools to assist in image analysis workflows. I'm going to touch on these in more detail today, but as a quick introduction, the four modules I'd like to introduce are tissue array, multiplex phenotyping, tissue align, and brain mapping. During the course of the, the rest of the first half of this talk, I'll be touching on each one of these core tools and modules in a little more detail. Let's start with AI deep learning. This is a really important part of the core platform features. Complex problems require advanced tools, and in this case, many researchers or other users of image analysis software start to hit walls with traditional techniques such as thresholding or shallow learning techniques. Deep learning really allows you to do a number of different things, including segment tissue without complex stains, detect subtle and low uh, contrast structures, and you can see here from the example I've put on the left, tumor detection is a great example of these kinds of low contrast structures. You can hopefully make out that there are areas here that are slightly darker blue stained of tumor, small areas in the top left and the right hand side. And these can be positive or negative for other IHC stains. Trying to detect these with traditional or shallow learning techniques is a non-trivial activity. The other advantage of deep learning is that we can build robust apps that work across a range of stains, across a range of tissues, and across a range of staining regimes. In this case, for instance, we can build apps that work with H&E and IHC. But building robust apps also means being able to cope with standard variants that we see in biological samples that could be induced by the biology itself, by cut thickness, or staining protocols. Another point is that when we can automatically segment tissue and identify regions of interest or areas of interest, we can start to replace laborious manual tasks 
such as outlining areas of interest with automation. And once we've automated a process, this means that it's highly scalable. As another introduction to the deep learning tools, it's worth mentioning that all of these tools are trained by example. So simply by annotating examples of the types of regions or objects you'd like to detect, the user can very easily create deep learning apps without any a priori knowledge of deep learning or convolutional neural networks. I'd like to give a couple of examples of problems where deep learning really comes into its own. These can be broadly split up into two types of problems. The first, as identified by these middle two examples, are about detecting areas or regions within the image. In this case, the epidermis of skin or complex structures in H&E, such as necrosis and tumor and stroma detection. The other broad category of identification would be object detection. And in this case, this is anything that can be expressed as a discrete object, such as a cell nucleus in either bright field or fluorescence, glomeruli in a kidney, or other cells stained with, for instance, IHC and PDL1 in this case. Deep learning can facilitate all of these workflows in a very robust way. I'd like to move on and talk about some of the modules that are available in Viz and how they might be used for solving image analysis problems. The tissue array module is chiefly designed to de-array TMA slides. In this case, a TMA slide is simply one that doesn't have a single piece of tissue or several pieces of tissue, but can have many tens or hundreds of individual cores representing either different tissues, different patients, or different experimental types. It's a very high density way to collect data. And in this case, what the tissue array module can do is to break up each one of these cores into individual units or images for processing. This way, the results of your analysis can be intersected across either working groups, tissue types, or different conditions. The tissue array module is a simple wizard-based deraying and has step-by-step -step guidance, so the user always knows what they need to do to advance to the next step. If your scanner has a customized layout file, this can be imported, and apps can be run in line. Importantly, this can also be combined with our tissue align module that I'll talk about in a little while for multiplexing in Brightfield. Just to give you an idea of how easy this process is, there's a short video here that introduces the workflow for tissue array. In this case, we simply load in our core image. You can see here it's a relatively small number, but this is scalable up to even 384 core um, layouts. A new grid is designated and the number of cores in X and Y can be pointed out. Here, the size of each core is also estimated in the dialog. Once the user is happy with the array, you can then simply drag the mask over the top of the cores, as shown here, deselect any cores that are not of interest, and then use the Fit Cores button to jog each one of these masks over the individual cores. The cores are de-arrayed and are available for review. At this point, apps can also be run on all of the cores individually and the results reported. The next module I'd like to introduce is that of multiplex phenotyping. Now, this really deals with higher content data, such as fluorescent multiplex or mass cytometry imaging, whereby we have more than just a three channel image and we can start to collect data that are up to eight, 10, 20, 50, even 100 individual channels. There's basically no limits on the input data that can be used for the VisioFarm platform. And in this case, what we offer are simple tools to be able to identify, phenotype, and cluster individual cells within our image. The workflow is similar to other ones in Viz, whereby we simply identify cells. This can also be any phenotypic unit of interest using a deep learning classifier. Again, this leverages the robust deep learning tools that we have built into our platform. Once the cells are detected, they can simply be passed to a secondary app 
to do the identification and classification of our cellular phenotypes. Because the VisioFarm platform allows building up of multiple apps in a single workflow, we can also put apps upstream of our cell detection here. These apps could do things like outline tissue sections, detect tumors, necrosis, or other areas of interest within the tissue, but also do artifact removal, which can be very helpful for automating workflows where there are, for instance, tears or staining errors or other objects that we don't want to count. Once our phenotyping classifier has been run, we can produce a range of different outputs. These are customizable by the user, but just to give you an idea of the sorts of things that we can create, we can create simple results. These could be things like counts of a particular phenotype or a particular cell type, for instance, a CD8 positive cell, either as raw counts or as percentages of a larger population. We can also create heat maps to display the density of any given class or any combination of classes. Very useful for identifying hotspots of a particular phenotype. Spatial statistics are very important, especially in immuno-oncology. And so we have built-in tools to measure the object distance between any two phenotypes, for instance, CD8 positive cells and macrophages. We can also calculate the distances between these phenotypes and other regions, such as invasive margins or tumor boundaries. Lastly, we have a whole suite of phenographs that are available as a push button solution. This allows you to display the clustering information and to do some exploratory phenotyping work. All of this with no coding required. I'd like to just highlight, whilst on multiplex phenotyping, two broad approaches to phenotypic analysis. What we tend to see is that some people really want to perform initial exploratory analysis on their data. This means phenotyping every cell in an entire tissue in an unbiased fashion. You can see here the results of phenotyping and hopefully make out some of the different classes in different colors. Once we've identified this, we can produce a number of different phenographs to describe the prevalence, the location, the clustering behavior, and also the contribution of different channels into this phenotyping analysis. Another approach, if not the exploratory one, is to actually ask specific questions of your data. This could be something as in this case, like how many or what percentage of the cells within 20 microns of a melanoma are cytotoxic T cells. To do this, we can use our built-in VIS tools in order to both identify the melanoma cells here in magenta, and then identify the individual cells that are proximal to the melanoma. These are the cyan ones. We can then selectively phenotype only subsets of this image and then produce results based only on those subsets. This allows you to ask these sorts of questions that I just introduced. And in this case, the result is about 6% of T cells within 20 microns of melanoma are cytotoxic. This wouldn't be possible without being able to phenotype our images and our cells and understand the proportions of all of the different populations involved in. I'd like to move on and mention tissue align modules. The tissue align module is very useful for registering two images together. In this case, in the same ethos as our tissue array module, we have a simple wizard based alignment here that can provide step by step support through the very easy process. We've implemented a drag and drop system to simply take one image and then drop it onto a second one to indicate that they're linked. And we can align multiple images, even from different modalities. This could be something as simple as an H&E with an IHC, but also fluorescence to bright field images. If you have multiple sections on a slide, either together or individually, we can align multiple sections across a slide or across separate slides. The automated alignment works very well but sometimes you may need to drop some pins. And in this case, we have a landmark guided alignment available. 
I'd like to mention just a couple of different applications of our tissue align module. The first is what I would call the traditional usage. And in this case, it's used to define regions of interest. On the left, you can see that we have both a functional marker and a tumor marker in serial sections. In this case, a pancytokeratin gives a very high contrast in the tumor regions. The KI67 functional marker has less obvious boundaries on the tumor. In this case, after registration of these two images, we can define our boundaries of tumor based on the tumor marker and then transfer these onto the functional marker for subsequent analysis. In this case, we're detecting KI67 positivity only within the tumor areas. This is an example of aligning serial sections, but a lot of very interesting work is being done with serial staining techniques, whereby a single piece of tissue is stained and imaged, then the stain is stripped off the tissue, and the tissue is re-stained with a new set of markers and probes. This can then be re-imaged, and using the tissue align module, individual images of the same tissue section can be registered. Excitingly, because this is the same tissue, these can be registered to a single cell level. You can see here the result of aligning four different stains, an H&E and three IHC, and hopefully you can make out that there is single cell alignment here down to a couple of pixels. This is a really exciting approach because what it allows for is cell level phenotyping in Brightfield. You can pull in multiple stains from multiple images and really start to understand the complexity of the tissue without the need for fluorescent markers. The last module I'd like to mention is brain mapping. In this case, we have two different approaches for brain mapping in the VisioFarm platform. The first is using an atlas. In this case, what we can do is to take our sections, in this case, a coronal of a mouse brain, align a pre-built atlas onto the brain. Then we can select the regions of interest from the brain atlas. This can be any granularity, in this case, up to thousands of different regions within the entire brain stack. These regions can then be converted to VisioFarm ROIs for further processing or analysis. This is a great approach and very high precision, but accuracy is highly sample dependent. In this case, if parts of the brain are missing or altered by disease, the atlas may not align correctly with the brain regions. I'll also mention that custom atlases can be created either outside of Viz or within the VisioFarm platform. The problems with the sample dependence of atlas mapping were solved by VisioFarm using a deep learning technique called context-aware region mapping. In this video, you can see another section of brain and simply an ROI is drawn around the brain and then a context-aware region mapping app has been trained against different regions within this brain. You can see that the regions are identified despite the lack of atlas. In this case, even if parts of the brain are missing, damaged or changed, the deep learning app has been trained to recognize these and because of the context of the brain or other structured tissue can then identify these regions. At this point, context aware region mapping has a lower precision, but is far more robust against tissue changes. Now, once we've identified regions of interest within the brain, we can of course leverage the other integrated tools in the VisioFarm platform. For instance, in order to measure these areas, we can define uh, absolute area measurements or to perform further analysis using other apps. In this case, we can use, for instance, deep learning apps to identify amyloid plaques in particular regions of the brain. Or of course, we can come in and identify individual cells, count them and classify them in any of these stains using deep learning approaches. This really provides a flexibility for the user who wants to come in and ask a particular question using rodent brain models. 
So to briefly summarize, the Visio Farm platform is a very flexible toolbox. It allows users to solve a wide range of image analysis problems, not just for today's research, but for tomorrow's analysis too. Users can of course build their own apps using train by example deep learning that I've demonstrated today, or they can leverage pre-built validated apps. And you can see the URL at the bottom of the screen here, leading to our app center where there are over 140 examples of individual apps that have been validated and tested across a range of different tissue types and staining. The capabilities of the core platform can be extended with some of these extra modules that I've shown today. Things like tissue align, tissue array, the multiplex tools, as well as brain atlas mapping, and all are integrated seamlessly into the platform. This means that these can be combined with the existing tools that you have. And lastly, to reiterate the ethos, this is complex analysis made simple. This makes it easier for users to learn and use the VisioFarm platform. The last thing I'd like to mention in this part of the talk is scalability. What I've suggested and shown in demos so far are really single um, solutions. In this case, oftentimes, once people have done their due diligence, have QC'd their workflow, what they'll want to do is to scale up processing. And I just wanted to mention how this looks in the VisioFarm platform. We can, for instance, select a number of cases. This could be 10, 100, or 1,000 slides that want to be processed automatically. Set up an app workflow simply by chaining together multiple apps. Here I've demonstrated a tumor detection and a cell detection. And then these can simply be batch processed using these tools built into Viz. An entire study can be selected and batch processed, and this sends them to the queue for processing. Now this is one means of scalability, whereby an app workflow is run across multiple images. But when people talk about scalability, they also want to talk about deployment and infrastructure. And just to very quickly mention that this queue can look the same from any workstation, but can actually deploy jobs not only to a single workstation, but to a local cluster or to server infrastructure, which can be local, or can be in the cloud. And from this way, we can scale up to the processing and usage requirements of individual users. For the second part of this talk, I'm delighted to introduce Dr. Keith Bowers, a senior business development manager at Oracle Bio. He'll be talking about building customer centric value for drug discovery and development. Welcome Keith, the floor is yours. Thank you Dave for the introduction. Please do allow me one slide to introduce Oracle Bio to set the scene, and then I will indeed cover how we operate as a COO using VisioFarm software to deliver value to pharma and biotech clients worldwide. Oracle Bio is a contract research organization that specializes in the quantitative image analysis of histopathology slides. We generate these data using analysis workflows that are both robust and collaborative in nature. Our expertise is significant. The company has been established 10 years, generating data from complex and challenging image analysis scenarios. Our experience in this area is complemented by our personal career backgrounds, which amounts to decades of experience within the pharmaceutical industry. Not only image analysis, but histology, clinical pathology, and pharma R&D. The purpose of the company, our vision if you like, is to drive the adoption and application of quantitative digital pathology across drug research and development, supporting the progression of personalized medicine. And we operate our systems within a quality framework system, both as an overarching structure to run the company, training logs, job descriptions, but also down to details of standard operating procedures for individual processes, including algorithm validation and extending this framework to now be able to deliver image analysis projects to a level expected for regulatory level reporting. The essence of our delivery to clients, the interrogation of tissue biology to generate data, to release information held within these images, can be encompassed in the concept of the quantitative image analysis workflow, summarized below and in the following slides. 
Allow me to briefly take you through these steps. Here we start with image management, the transfer of scanned images. We generally receive images using transfer across our Ignite folder system or through AWS S3 buckets, both highly secure transfer systems. The next step is the all important QC and annotation step. The quality of the data from any image analysis is underpinned by the quality of these images. We take great care in ensuring only image areas that are devoid of confounding artifacts, whether it be focus, scanning lines, tissue folds, staining quality, are negatively annotated out of the process or in cases the whole image is removed in its entirety. This essential exercise is burdensome when performed through manual annotation. We have utilized in Farm tissue find algorithms to automatically identify tissue and remove white space, for example, much reducing the burden of manual annotations. And then, of course, we have pathologist annotations, defining the regions of interest for subsequent analysis, an all-important experienced eye to guide the development and training of the subsequent algorithms. For example, we see some obvious artifacts within the grey annotations, signalled for removal, and positive annotations in green to define regions that we do wish to be analysed. Next up, the actual algorithm development, which can be at the tissue level, of course. In this case, employing the use of a VisioFarm deep learning algorithm to distinguish between tumour tissue in orange and supporting stroma in blue, but also at the cell level. Here we have an example with staining generated using one of the serially stained techniques that Dave mentioned earlier, in this case Ultiview's Ultimapper Immuno-Oncology 8-Plex kit. For this cell analysis here we use VisioFarm software capabilities to define cell shape based upon the cell lineage biomarker expression. Small, rounder immune T cells, B cells in the stroma, the larger and more diffuse in shape macrophages in yellow, and of course the larger tumor cells bordered in blue and cyan. And finally, image processing of the validated algorithms, and again a level of data checking and QC before sending data on to clients. However, this brief overview does not cover the additional requirements of a workflow necessary to fully meet the expectations of our clients and indeed our own standards. The questions being asked of the biology are becoming more complex, driven by the appreciation of the roles of other cellular players beyond T cells, the search for meaningful biomarkers, cell location proximity also a known factor. These challenges are being met with advances in staining technologies, advances in multiplexing techniques, immunofluorescence, and image mass spectroscopy. But these are putting demands on the downstream image analysis, not only in terms of the deconvolution of the biology, but also in terms of actual image size and the computing power needed to run the algorithms in a timely manner. Speed and scalability are paramount. A workflow should not be a black box for clients, and it must function across multiple disciplines. Pathologists, both CRO and client-based, image analysts, project biologists. It should operate in an environment that allows transparency of decision-making, allowing visibility of images and overlays to confirm the validity of the data. This facilitates the collaborative ethos we have found to be essential in order to deliver meaningful data. Of course, the data must come in a reportable fashion, generated in a context of robust, reproducible procedures that can be trusted, validated, authenticated. And IT security to maintain confidentiality of information from external threats and ensure data resilience and durability. The use of VisioFarm software helps us meet these demands. The versatility of the VisioFarm software 
gives us the flexibility to address the increasing complexity of pathology images within the images per se, but also the ensuing biological questions that are posed. The example I've described earlier encompasses this multiplex IF images and the ability to label cells based upon their biomarker defined lineage. We have access to all apps and modules, including VisioFarm Deep Learning, plus our use of VisioFarm's subscription model gives us the ability to offer a scalable solution. The unlimited licenses and processing of image number per month allows Oracle Bio to process quickly and efficiently image analysis projects. At Oracle Bio, we have developed a hybrid IT infrastructure that incorporates both cloud and local server capabilities. We deploy the VisioFarm software on our AWS cloud, which provides us with unlimited computing infrastructure including GPU firepower needed for AI modules. AWS is a vastly scalable on-demand resource that allows us to meet client needs in a cost-efficient manner. Plus, we utilize heavily VisioFarm's batch processing, which allows us to run analysis over multiple images simultaneously. This allows us to run studies quickly and return data back to clients in a timely manner. Plus we have a validated version of VisioFarm on our server, stored in a state-of-the-art data center, Data Vita, to support our regulatory level reporting needs. Both systems have high levels of security, authentication procedures, as does our use of the Ignite platform and AWS S3 buckets for sharing images at the start of the workflow. All images are encrypted during transfer and storage, and there are disaster recovery and backup procedures in place in both systems to offer peace of mind. Collaboration and visibility of images is facilitated greatly by our deployment of a Visio Farm viewer on a web-based portal. This is a proprietary system that we have called Observer. Clients can log on to Observer where they have access to their own project information. It allows images, pathology annotations, image analysis derived cell overlays to be shared with clients seamlessly at all points of the workflow process. It thus supports decisions throughout the workflow from the concurrence of the initial pathology annotations through to an agreement on algorithm performance criteria. Pathologists ever key to this field can be fully integrated into the workflow through the use of Observer hosted VisioFarm. We have two highly trained clinical pathologists working at Oracle Bio. The breadth and depth of these individuals' knowledge is remarkable and again allows Oracle Bio to respond quickly to the variety of tissue and cancer types that we are exposed to. In addition to this, we have an external network of pathologists, clinical and veterinary, Often clients have their own pathologist resource that we are happy to integrate into our workflow using Observer. Pathologist annotations are incorporated into the image analysis workflow by using the VisioFarm Tissue Align app. For example, pathologist annotations from an H&E image are often co-registered to a serial IHC biomarker section to define clearly regions of interest for subsequent analysis. And finally, the workflow and the associated systems that surround it are encapsulated in a quality management framework. Confidence in data integrity and quality is paramount. We established a quality management framework on our journey towards offering image analysis services to a regulatory standard. We are launching our GCP image analysis services this quarter, performed using VisioFarm software. But of course, non-regulatory studies benefit from a quality management framework, as it represents an adherence to SOPs, infrastructure and software validation that pervades all of Oracle Bio studies. Through the versatility of VisioFarm, we offer the image analysis services across a broad range of staining technologies, in situ hybridization, single dual IHC, tumor microarrays and multiplexing. 
For example, analysis of in situ hybridization using technologies such as RNA scope is a popular approach for the evaluation of changes in early biomarker expression or a particular drug response effect in tissue. In this case, single target validation and target presence can be supported by us generating data such as number of probe positive and negative cells in tissue ROIs per section or classification of probe positive cells into low, medium and high probe signal content per section. Single or dual stain chromogenic IHC, the foundation of tissue histological investigation is something we investigate often. Here, we perform studies to investigate mechanism of action or target occupancy, for example, reporting data such as the number of positive cells, intensity and biomarker expression per cell, for example, or quantitating the immune cell infiltration, cell count in tumor border versus tumor core. We have heard from Dave about the modules for tissue microarray analysis within the Vizio Farm tissue array module. This supports target validation efforts and patient stratification approaches across a broad number of tissue types in an efficient manner. And here again, we report data that support disease stratification such as tumor stroma content per core, number of positive cells in specific ROIs per core, IHC intensity per cell, and H score, if you like. And of course, we have multiplex immunofluorescence, which I have alluded to earlier in this talk, a powerful approach to interrogate complex tissue, most notably the tumor microenvironment. And here, we report data such as the number of single, dual, triple, even quadruple positive cells within tumor or stroma. We can generate data regarding proximity analysis, or invasive margin interrogation. How many T cells have made that transition from the stroma into the tumor? And these applications add value across the entire drug discovery and development pipeline, from target validation studies in early discovery, preclinical through to translational and through to clinical. And the use of image analysis within companion diagnostics represents a journey that many of us are on. Much of this talk has centered on processes and infrastructure, but what really makes processes work are people and relationships. We value our relationship with VisioFarm. The communication channels are open, allowing us to work openly to continue to advance the impact that image analysis and digital pathology has and will continue to have on basic science and patient care. I would like to thank them for the opportunity they gave me to speak on behalf of Oracle Bio. Thank you. Great. Thank you for the excellent presentation. Well, it's interesting to see how all this technology is really absorbing these pathology workflows. We'd like to thank David and Keith and Oracle Bio for their time, and thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at webinar at visiofarm.com or check out our other webinars or additional content available in the Knowledge Library on the Visio Farm website. Thanks and have a great day.